Good afternoon. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your afternoon edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Saturday, the 5th of August, 2017. Looking at the tropics this afternoon, we're really not going to worry about this area much longer. It seems that um, sinking air is the culprit, and a few people pointing that out to me on Twitter. Sometimes it's very obvious. You just have to look for the different clues and subsidence or sinking air, um, especially in the upper levels, is responsible, I guess, for the lack of development from this system, and somehow the global forecast system was not aware of that in recent days, or maybe that stuff developed. I don't know. Nevertheless, the system is now down to 50% in the long term and probably won't develop much as it moves off to the west so we're not going to worry as much about that this is going to be the primary area of concern for obvious reasons it is closer to land areas and this looks like it is poised to develop if we look at the latest visible satellite animation for this afternoon here it is it's definitely way more than we saw yesterday when there was really nothing down in this area and now we have a distinct low pressure area you can see that broad turning right about in here a lot of the convection is over on the east side but that's going to probably change over time this is going to be moving towards warmer and warmer water as well much higher upper ocean heat content lies in its path all the way over towards central america and the yucatan some of the warmest water in the atlantic basin and so it's going to have ample energy to work with and eventually become a tropical depression and maybe even a tropical storm. Meanwhile, out here with 99L, just a complete mess, and you can tell the sinking air uh, is prevalent because there's just very little in the way of deep convection at all. And you've got sort of this dry air working its way in as well, and so conditions out this way are just not as favorable now. Before you go and say that, well, that'll do it for the active hurricane season, um, that is definitely not necessarily the case because you're still going to have the tropical waves that move off. In fact, this originated from a tropical wave. And so if they don't develop here, let's just say that this is not favorable, then they're going to start developing farther to the west and they can have much more of an impact. I mean, remember last year, Matthew did not get going until it was close to the Windward Islands. And it went on to, of course, cause a lot of havoc. And, you know, you remember what it ended up doing. Okay, so um, just because they don't develop out here doesn't mean that we're not going to have a busy season. You can just look back at past seasons to see what I'm talking about with that, that an, uh, an inactive MDR does not mean the United States and other land masses are safe. And it's not just homegrown development, so to speak. When you have something that's just a few days away, like we're seeing now with this system, you know, the wave itself came from all the way out here. All right? So we'll see. It's just August 5th as well. That's a big part of it, and the climatology really does matter. So let's take a look at the vorticity signature. It continues to improve with this area. Let's draw with red. That would be more helpful. Continues to improve around 90L, but over here, this is just an elongated mess, and so we're not going to worry about that much longer. So let's watch over the next day or two as this continues to consolidate and pull the energy in and uh, see how much of this land mass here uh, that this clears the more north of west that this travels, then the better chance this will have to develop uh, into a tropical storm before reaching the Yucatan or Belize. Uh, The peninsula is a geographic generalization, and then Belize, of course, is a country along the east side of the Yucatan Peninsula. Now here is a close-up visible satellite animation, and I think you can clearly see uh, right in here this rotation Uh, a center of circulation trying to get going there with convection building along the west side and the east side and the south side there's decent outflow Uh, so it's on its way and recon is tentatively scheduled to visit this tomorrow the air force reserves hurricane hunters uh, should fly out there and i assume unless it dies overnight that that'll still be the case tomorrow and also for you folks in jamaica 
you know, any of this cloud cover that you can get to come your way and give you some relief from the heat, I'm sure you will take it. But in terms of any direct impacts, uh, this is not moving north towards your area. It's moving off to the west and west-northwest with time. Now, Bluefields, Nicaragua, I can't remember exactly where it is, but it's over here along the east coast, maybe a little bit farther south. But you see the Nicaraguan-Honduran uh, border right here. And so this is about on the same latitude as that. And as it moves a little bit more north of west, it should clear the coast and stay in the Gulf of Honduras and potentially strengthen. So we need to really watch this closely, especially for you, you folks along the eastern part of the Yucatan. So this is going to be my focal point going forward. The European model this afternoon, uh, the latest version of it here from Tropical Tidbits, uh, Levi Cowan's website. Uh, this is the initial condition at 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. That's what 850 millibars would indicate. And we are looking at what we call cyclonic vorticity or spin in the atmosphere. And we're looking to see if anything becomes round. That's the big key. Uh, we're looking for balls of vorticity. That's the simplest way to put it. And that's what I look for. You know, this isn't necessarily the way that you know, everybody does it, or a uh, you know people at the National Hurricane Center. But this is what I look for. These are the clues that I can uncover. And here is the vorticity signature, as loose as it may be, associated with the system uh, on the initial map. So then let's move on through the next five days. This is 24 hours out, and you can see that it starts to consolidate uh, right here, just east of Nicaragua and Honduras. And then at 48 hours out. Uh, even more so, uh, right up here just to the north coast of Central America, uh, into the Gulf of Honduras, east of Belize, still trying to get its act together. And it may try to do this faster than what we're seeing here. That would not surprise me, and I say that because the upper ocean heat content through this area is very high. There's a lot of warm water there for this to take advantage of. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me if this is organizing faster than what the European is showing. Uh, so that's 48, this is 72 hours, and you can see it comes right in there. This would almost certainly be of tropical storm strength at this point. So you folks along the Yucatan definitely need to be paying attention to this. If you have travel plans to that region, uh, you want to monitor this. I wouldn't cancel the plans. This is not a severe hurricane headed your way, but it could certainly put a dent in any flights or uh, reef expeditions in the region. You know, Belize has some of the most beautiful reefs in the Western Hemisphere. So just check, okay, with your travel professional, as it's uh, called, right, and just make sure that everything is running according to plan as this is lurking uh, at the 72-hour mark. And this would be valid at 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, Tuesday, August the 8th, by the way, just to give you a reference. Then at 96 hours out, uh, boy, that really starts to intensify there. And so this is Wednesday morning. And then finally Thursday morning, very close to the coast here of central Mexico. Uh, and that looks like a very well-developed hurricane in the model field. We'll go look at more detailed model graphics as this evolves. The different hurricane models, the h Wharf and the H-Mon, the replacement to the GFDL. Uh, this is just a general look kind of like the um, the synopsis of a movie, and then we're going to go see the movie later. Does that make sense? So this tells us that something's probably going to develop in the Northwest Caribbean through the Bay of Campeche, and folks in especially Mexico here need to keep an eye on it. We will also look at, as this evolves, you know, we have about five days. This is not too terribly far south of Mexico, of, of Mexico, of the Texas-Mexico border, you got Brownsville sitting just inland, and then of course uh, South Padre Island right here. And you know, five days out, this is probably pretty accurate overall. But you know, if it's a hundred miles more to the north, then your easterly flow that's going to be certainly coming in this way could elevate surf conditions. And if there's any feeder bands, we need to keep an eye on that. So uh, we're going to really be focusing on this area. You know, I would say from Corpus Christi on south, certainly through central to southeast Mexico, 
keep a close eye on it. Not too worried about it in the South Texas, but we don't want to ignore the possibility that this does bring some impact to the region. Meanwhile, that is 99L, not developing, so we won't worry about it too much. Nevertheless, could bring some cloudiness, showers and thunderstorms and squally weather to portions of the Lesser Antilles as we get into next week, so we will monitor that. And this wave energy will eventually end up somewhere over here, and you never know what happens down the road. So just because they don't develop way out in the main development region and give us two weeks to track them uh, doesn't mean that they are not problematic somewhere else. They could pop up. And again, even this map here is only August the 10th. And look, if we have a hurricane, let's just say for the sake of argument that this feature right here becomes a hurricane. Well, the average date of the first hurricane, it just depends, it is usually around August 10th. And sometimes in different databases, you can see earlier, maybe August 2nd, but we would not be too far behind. We would have, at that point, uh, this would be Franklin, so it would be up to six named storms and one hurricane if this does, in fact, go on to develop. And that's pretty much par for the course in early August. So no hemming and hawing about the hurricane season is not going to be productive. I think you're going to be wrong. I could be wrong, but I'm just telling you, you look at the calendar and that tells you a lot. Meanwhile, out in the western Pacific, Nauru continues to slowly head towards the coast of Japan, the southwest island here of Kyushu. A lot of rainfall with this system is the primary issue. The winds are now down to 85 miles per hour. The satellite presentation much more disheveled. Uh, it looks like there might even be some northerly shear impacting this because the clouds, I don't know, maybe not, but that just it doesn't look normal what we're used to seeing, and uh, some dry air certainly mixing in here, what little bit of convective activity over on the northeast side. So from a wind perspective, this is not going to be too much of an issue, but even for folks in Japan who are used to typhoon, at least threats, the rainfall is going to be excessive and has been, and that will continue to be the case, and so we need to you know monitor that uh, over there. Again, I didn't want to ignore this you know, news-making event, what's happening in the Western Pacific. All right, so the focus again is going to be on 90L, eventually going to be a depression and probably a tropical storm and maybe even a hurricane. And so we're going to really focus on that more and more uh, because of the obvious impact coming up to Central America and then eventually most likely somewhere in Central Mexico on the Western Gulf side uh, next week. All right, well, that's it for me for today, and that will conclude the updates from me for today. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back with two, one in the morning and then one in the afternoon again, and we'll see what happens with this system. And we will go from there. It looks like a busy time ahead, even if it's not going to be from the system in the Atlantic. The other system, I believe you'll see, is going to have enough of an impact to keep us all quite busy. Have a great rest of your Saturday. I think I already said that. I'm Mark Sutherland for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.